Got a six and one team in Blue Spring South and Liberty at three and three. The combined records of the four teams, 23 and four. It's a brutal district. Joining us on the broadcast, Dan and Hughes. And Dan, Blue Springs goes as their quarterback goes. Stinson Dean must have a big game tonight. Well, he definitely has to have a good big game. He's a big play guy. He's a, he has a strong arm. He can make all the throws necessary for this team to win. And they're looking to lean on his shoulders to carry them to victory today. And some big shoulders on the Oak Park side. None bigger than Michael Keenan, the senior tailback. Well, Michael Keenan, like we spoke earlier, he had some injuries early in the year. He hasn't played uh, in the last couple of games as well as he'd like to. And he's come, come out here today. He's, he's already committed to Nebraska. They're looking for some big plays from him today. You can't ask for much more. Number one versus number two. High school game of the week. Kids had a ha half a day today. I mean, they've been out here early and they're ready to go. We're ready to go. Opening kickoff coming up on the High B High School Game of the Week after this timeout here on Metro Sports. High School Game of the Week is brought to you by High B and their 20 Kansas City area employee-owned High Bee locations. Farmers Insurance and their Kansas City Metro agents and district managers. Remember, farmers get you back where you belong. KC Bobcat. In blue. The High School Game of the Week is brought to you by High V and their 20 Kansas City area employee-owned High V locations. Farmers Insurance and their Kansas City Metro agents and district managers. Remember, farmers get you back where you belong. KC Bobcat. In Blue Springs, Grandview, and Olathe. Cotman Transmission, home of the best free transmission evaluation in town. Athlete Technology. Personalized replica football jerseys for area high schools. And by Overhead Door Company of Kansas City. The genuine, the original. Back in Northtown, ready for the opening kickoff between number one Blue Springs and number two Oak Park. Oak Park won the toss to further option of the second half. This will be Jarrett Morris for the Wildcats, faking the reverse. And Morris, nice shake and bake. Boy, this guy's electric out near the 30-yard line, and that's where the Wildcats will set up shop with their quarterback, Stinson Dean, the senior. Big kid, 6'2", 215, a rocket for an arm. As far as his numbers this season, look at that completion rate, 74% and a 10-4 to 4 ratio, touchdowns to interceptions. Last year, had 22-9 to 9 on the ratio, 22 touchdowns to 9 interceptions. He understands the system, according to Kelly Donho, and we go as number 19 goes. First and 10, four receiver set. Lone setback is Morris. Quick pass on the slant is caught for short yardage to Justin Brown. We get about three or four yards on the play. Tackled by Randy Smith for Oak Park. Let's check our starting lineups. Brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. We love sports as much as you do. Up front, Stagall, Reed, Schneider, Palloway, and Simpson. Leading rusher is Jarrett Morris. Top receiver is Kevin Zai. And Zai has 27 catches and two touchdowns on the season. Second down, six yards to go for Blue Springs. First drive of the game. Pump fake, give it to Morris. And runs near a first down as we take a look at Oak Park defensively, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. 
Look at Brett Hardy, the defensive end. He's a sack master along with Lee Latham and Martino. Linebackers very good, led by Slamma and Gleason as far as the top tacklers. And in the secondary, Mark Turner, also the quarterback, leads the team with interceptions as he has four. And there's the big defensive end, also is the tight end, Brett Harding. It'll be third down and just over a yard for the Wildcats. Toss it to the short side, Morris cutting it up and gets near the first down stake before Michael Keenan wraps him up. It'll depend on the spot. Looks like it's going to be a first down. He did a great job of driving forward, pitch play into the short side of the field. He just saw a little bit of a, a, little bit of a hole and, and was able to, I believe, pick up that first down. Quarterback Stinson Dean thinks so. The chain gang will tell us. Phil Stompoli, Ben Rold, Bill Titcomb, Jerry Rochebach, and Justin Gregg are your officials, and it is a first down for the Blue Springs Wildcats, coached by Kelly Donahoe. It is fourth year, the former University of Kansas quarterback, honorable mention all Big 8, and look at that winning percentage, 89%. And he has one state title under his belt in 2001, looking for another one this year, coming in at 7-0. But has to get through this very tough Class 6 District 8. First and 10 Wildcats, just outside their own 40-yard line. Oh, swing pass to Kevin Zai. Nice move across the midfield stripe and a first down as the play goes for 13 yards to Kevin Zai. The young man that leads the team in catches, and that was his 28th catch of the season. And this young man, they say, compares to Josh Barge for their state title team of 2001. Nice, nice grab, but look at the block by Hill. Six foot six, put it all into that defensive back. And just a great execution on that play. Wildcats averaging 337 total yards per game, average 41 points per game. And this will be Chris Benham, and it's running backs by committee with the Wildcats. We'll also see Cameron Harms, so we'll see Morris, Benham, and Harms. This was Benham, the senior, and he's got nearly 400 yards this year. Nick Lee with the defensive stop for the Northmen. So... The old RBBC, Dana, running backs by committee for the Wildcats. Keep in mind, last year they had Andrew Tuggle, a two-time All-Stater, Gatorade Missouri Player of the Year. He's now at Emporia State University. Second and six, play action. Dean with the pump, the fire, and complete to Kevin Zai for another first down. Zai still on his feet inside the 20. Busted out of play by Michael Keenan, but Kevin Zai coming up big in the first drive of the game for the Wildcats. Well, this is great play call on by Blue Springs. Running up the middle, up the middle. They've been able to spread out the offense. A very good mix in the play calling right now, and, and those guys are doing a great job downfield making the plays, making the necessary blocks. Kelly Donahoe says this is the best group of wide receivers we've had since I've been here, and they've had some pretty good ones. Zai now with 29 catches on the season. And an outstanding opening drive for Stinson Dean and the Wildcats. First and 10, ball at the 18-yard line in Oak Park territory. Running play that is blown up. Jarrett Morris going nowhere as the outside linebacker Ian Helmuth with the stop, his 41st stop of the year. Basically, we got a outside linebacker blitzing right here, right into the play. Pulling guards can't get there in time. Just a great... Great job by the Northmen. He's second down and 13 after the tackle for a loss by Ian Helmuth, one of the most improved players for Coach Keith Ross, a senior, 190 pounds. Nick Lee digging in on the defensive line for the Northmen. Second down and long. Dean trying to take off and going to be sacked. Looks like Brett Harding got him first. The ball came loose, but the official was pointing to the turf and saying, the quarterback was down, but Ivan Hernandez there, the big bowling ball defensive lineman. But Harding looked like he grabbed it first, number 90. Let's take another look. Well, these Northmen are doing a great job up the middle, just in the running plays that were going back to the original first down on the first part of the drive. These guys have been very solid in the middle of this defense. They've just been, uh, had some big plays, had a couple big passing plays, but inside, they're, they're pretty solid in there. 
No gain on the play. Third down and 13 for the Wildcats. Short drop, Dean. Over the middle, it's complete. And they're going to be shy of the first down as the pass complete. Luke Whitworth, the tight end. And they're going to be a little bit short. It's going to be fourth down. Just over a yard, Wildcats and Stinson Dean looking to the sidelines. They have an excellent place kicker in Velasquez, and they go with the quarterback sneak. There is flags on the play. He would have acquired the first down, but it looks like uh, Kelly Dono's team going to be penalized. Ball start against Blue Springs. The Blue Springs try to catch him off guard there, going to a hurry up. Almost a hurry up type of offense right there for that last play and then get the quick. I don't think they fully set here, Danon. And, and that's hard to do when you know what we used to call that play a goose play where there wouldn't be much of a of a snap count from the quarterback. You would just tap the center and get the ball and go. And a lot of times you can catch your own self off guard. So they will. Try the field goal, 32 yards by Velasquez, and he is an excellent place kicker, Division I potential, and he knocks it through as Tinson Dean had the hold. 3-0, Blue Springs on top. So they get three on their opening drive in this first round district game at a jam-packed North Kansas City District Stadium. Fans have been rolling in since in the early afternoon to see this ball game. So Oak Park holds them to three points. And now they'll get their first crack on offense as Marcelo Velasquez has a huge leg. You have to tip your hat to the Northman defense. They were kind of on skates a little bit, part of that defensive stand. They had a couple of big plays. Blue Springs is marching down the field, but when it meant something, those guys were able to make a good stop and hold them to three points. Marcelo had two field goals last week of 25 and 37 in the win over Lee Summit. As long as 42 has range to 50 yards. And routinely will kick it in the end zone. Rude is the deep man. So the Travis Rude from the nine for the Northmen. Runs into his own blocker and can't swing it to the outside as John Samia, the nice special team stop for the Wildcats. And there's the quarterback for the Northman, Mark Turner. Not gaudy numbers, not a lot of flash and dash, but a steady player, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Only one INT to go with seven touchdown passes. And that's the type of quarterback you want to have when you have a, a guy like Keenan in the backfield and such a great offensive line. You just want a guy back there who's not going to make the silly mistakes and cost your team big plays. High formation. Helmuth the fullback, Keenan is the tailback as Root goes in motion. Here is Keenan, not much running room. As he'll be thrown back as we take a look at our starting lineups. Once again, brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. We love sports as much as you do. This may be the best offensive line in the city. Martino, Butler, Hedge, Baugh, and Lee. Leading rusher is Keenan, 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns. Travis Rude is their leading receptor, the slot man, number 89, has 19 catches and three going for touchdowns. There you see the big guys up front, A.J. Baugh. Second and long, Keenan up the middle, nice weaving action, and takes it near the 33 and a half yard line as we take a look at the Wildcats defensively. And the guys up front, some new faces up front. They've had some guys injured, Harrington, Silkwood, Stegall, and Wachner. Linebackers led by Sean Sharkey. They're saying this guy is filling the shoes nicely at Bruce Ringwood now at KU. And in the secondary, Zach Cunningham leads with four interceptions. And he will rock your world. It's third down, less than a yard for Oak Park as whistles blow and flags fly. And we'll hear from the crew headed by Phil Stompoli. Is Keith Ross, head coach of Oak Park in his 19th year, won 72% of his games. 
A couple of conference titles in the 90s, 93 and 99, and his team was the state runners up in 1996. So the penalty gives Oak Park the first down. Toss sweep, Michael Keenan turning the corner, lowering his head and shoulders and pounding up to the 40-yard line. He'll get about one on the play. Michael Keenan, the last three games, only four quarters. He injured his ankle in the Lee Summit North game, played very little in that ball game. In the Lee Summit game, he was ejected in the early fourth quarter, and according to state rules, you must sit out the next game if you're thrown out of a game. So he did not play in the Winnetonka game. So he's had time to get his ankle rehabbed, and he's told Chad Harberts before the game, his ankle is good to go, 100%. Second down and long. Turner looking deep Stand middle and too long for Travis Root, incomplete. Zach Cunningham, the free safety with the coverage. And speaking of Chad Harberts, he joins us on the sidelines tonight. Chad. Thank you, Kevin. I was out here about 5.15 this afternoon. Michael Keenan was out here catching some passes from his quarterback, and I asked him about missing last week's game with a suspension. He said it's the first game he's ever missed in his entire football playing career since he was a little kid he'd never missed a whole game but this may be a blessing in disguise because the ankle has had a chance to heal some more he says I don't feel it during the game I'll feel it tomorrow morning if you average Keenan's numbers he's averaging 239 yards per game and he's played five games 1200 yards on the season third down and long Turner the play action under duress and gonna be sacked as the defensive end, Corey Arrington, got him. 220-pound senior with his fourth sack of the season. And that's a great sack by the Blue Springs defense, but this is all on the quarterback. He has his lineman out there sealing him, and he steps right up into the sack. And unfortunately, there's nothing that the lineman can do about that. He's holding his man off. The quarterback has to feel that and be able to stay back there where he's protected. Punting time for Jake Bradshaw, averaging 33 yards per punt, just got it away. Kevin Zai fielding at the 28-yard line in his own. Zai lowering his pads, takes it up near the 37-yard line. Zai has one return of a punt for a touchdown against Winnetonka, 56 yards, averages 13 yards per punt. And he'll get about 10 yards on that return, and Blue Springs will have it back. Coming up, be sure to tune every Friday night at 10 right after the high school game of the week for the McDonald's High School Roundup. Chad Harberts, Brad Porter, and the rest of the gang will have highlights and scores from all your local teams. And if you missed Friday night's action, you can catch the Roundup Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. or Mondays at 5 p.m. It's the McDonald's High School Roundup, only on Metro Sports. From the 37, first and 10. And this will be Chris Benham to the outside, turning the corner. Knocked out of play by Michael Keenan after a short gain on first and 10 by Benham. Once again, we've got Benham, who's the steady, dependable guy. we got Cameron Harms. We'll see number 35. He is a tough cookie. And Jarrett Morris is the uh, electric back. Good receiving yards. Good rushing yards. Nobody with the big 1,000-yard totals, though. All these guys... At 453, 383, and 235 as far as the rushing totals. You can never have too many good, healthy running backs. I think between running back and, and wide receiver and defensive back, you can never have too many of those guys that can make plays that you can count on. The last few years, they've had Andrew Tuggle, two-time All-Stater now in Emporia State. A stoppage of the action with the officiating crew discussing things. Still haven't figured out what the problem is. I think there might be a clock problem that Phil Stompoli is staring at the scoreboard. And there you take a look at the averages. 337 yards per game for Kelly Donahoe's offense. They allow just 134 yards per game. Average 41 points per game. Allow 12 and a half points per game defensively. So the clock ran too far, and they've added some time to the clock. 344 now on the scoreboard. There's around 330, so they've added about 15 seconds. And are ready to go. Blue Springs leading 3 to nothing on a Velasquez 32-yard field goal. 
Second and eight. Dean with the pocket holding up, looking deep down the sidelines and just off the fingertips of Justin Brown, who has that big cast on his right hand, broke his wrist in the Rockers game. His first game back was last week, and that one just inches away, Danon. Well, as you can see, the quarterback did a great job looking straight down the middle and being able to pick up his receiver downfield. Perfect throw right off his fingertips. A little bit of alligator arms there where you think you, you don't have to stretch your arms out as, as long as you have to, but those, those plays have to be made. He had a great burst at the end of that play. That should, should have been six points. Kelly Donahoe says Justin Brown is the heart and soul of our team. Third down and eight. Dean under pressure. Trying to set up a wide receiver slip screen to Kevin Zai. Too much congestion. Hunting time for Blue Springs. Nick Lee with the pressure on the quarterback as we take another look. Well, this is what you want to happen. You want to have your guy back there. You want the, the defense to have some big pressure. Uh, unfortunately for the Blue Springs offense, the rest of the guys on the defensive line did not bite on that screen, and they broke it up. Drew De Peralta to punt it away, averaging 31 yards per punt. A wobbler that takes an Oak Park hop and is touched down at the 45. So the short field for the Northmen who trail three to nothing late stages of the first quarter. As we take a look at how these teams got to this point in the season, well, they've both gone undefeated. Oak Park blowing through a schedule of North Kansas City, Park Hill and Truman, one by 20 against Columbia Hickman. Had some problems, though, at Lee's Summit. Got a late field goal by D.L. Gleason, won that 30-27. And last week, they blew out Winnetonka 41 to nothing. First and 10 for Mark Turner and Oak Park. Keenan dragging tacklers for a couple of yards on the play. Tackled by John Samia. John Samia, an interesting story, was a corner. And one of the most improved players, John Samia. Let's take a look at Sean Sharkey, defensive leader. Another very improved player, a true success story from his freshman to senior year. Keep in mind, Blue Springs has had 10 All-State linebackers. I think Sean Sharkey might be number 11. Second down, seven for Oak Park. Keenan, blockers in front, uses them nicely and goes for a first down into Wildcat territory down to the 44-yard line right behind a nice block by his offensive lineman, Michael Keenan. Great patience by Michael Keenan, seeing his blockers pressing the hole and getting his shoulders going forward to pick up the big game. Great job. Sam Butler, the left guard, leading the surge as you take a look at the numbers for Michael Keenan on the night. Averaging just over four yards per carry. His season average is 11 yards per carry. Last year rushed for 168 and two touchdowns in a seven-point loss to Blue Springs, 21 to 14. First and 10, Keenan again, following A.J. Baugh down to the 40-yard line, and he'll gain about three on the play. He's second down, seven yards to go. Michael Keenan, of course, headed to Nebraska, where he's expected to play outside linebacker, but I've been told from Coach Keith Ross that may see some looks offensively running the football. Well, he definitely has the town, he has the size, he has the speed to play on either side of the ball. And I think he's going to be a great attribute to the Nebraska program with Frank Solich up there. On second down out of the eye formation, Keenan again. Being drugged down behind by his jersey by Corey Arrington as he's able to get it down to the 37-yard line, a few yards shy of the first down. These guys are doing, the offensive line is doing a great job of pulling and getting their hat on a body out there for Keenan. He's able to press those holes and be very patient. Kind of got slowed up by the jersey pull from behind, but a nice little game for him. Kyle Crandall also involved in the stop, the outside linebacker. It'll be third down, two yards to go for Oak Park. Keenan again, and the line starting to lean on Blue Springs as it's a first down run down to the 33-yard line. But you see the offensive line making a push, Danon. Well, this offensive line is very, very solid, and they're very good at the point of attack, and they're getting their hats on the Blue Springs defensive line and linebackers and just pushing them back. 
And they're kind of nickel and diming down the field right now. No real huge runs. Just three, four, and five yards. And that's all you want from your, your big running backs. New Springs playing eight men in the box to try to stop this running game. Keenan on the toss sweep. Keenan busts to the outside. Flags on the play as he goes for nearly eight yards. But this one's coming back. An illegal block coming up, it looks like, on Oak Park. And a hold is coming up. And usually on a type of play like that where a guy has, where the team has great pursuit, Blue Springs had great pursuit and he was still able to turn the corner, there had to be some kind of hold. On the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat first down. Slot man, Travis Rude, number 89. Coming out of a wing position. Yep, tackled the takedown. Cornerback, Justin Brown, that drew the flag and wiped out an eight yard run by Keenan. It'll be first and 17 now for the Northmen. Back to the 40 yard line in Blue Springs territory. Play action, the waggle. And now Turner loses the football on the deck, covered up by Kyle Crandall for the Wildcats. So he didn't tuck the ball away, and as he was running, the ball bouncing off the thigh pad, it looked like, of Turner. And the outside linebacker, Kyle Crandall, takes it for Blue Spring. This is the same exact play and the same exact problem Turner had the last series. He steps up inside of that block when he needs to use that lineman to hold that block for him and secure that pocket. And he just he fumbles the ball a little bit in his hands, trying to switch it from one hand to, to two, and it costs him. Kyle Crandall recovers it. First turnover of the ball game. Oak Park had three turnovers last week in the win over Winnetonk in the first quarter. This is Cameron Harms. Nice misdirection play as he weaves his way out to the 43-yard line. He'll get six yards on the play. Second down and four. Brett Harding, the outside guy, the defensive end with the stop as Harms checks out. As the running backs rotating in and out for Kelly Donahoe's team. As we've wrapped up things here in the first quarter, a field goal on the board for Blue Springs, our only scoring in a 32-yarder by Velasquez. And we're back with second quarter action on the high school game of the week. Number one, Blue Springs leading by a field goal over number two, Oak Park, as we get ready to go in the second quarter as we send it down to Chad Harberts. Thank you, Kevin. Oak Park coach Keith Ross cannot stand turnovers. No coach likes a turnover, but a guy who's a ball control guy like Keith Ross and Oak Park is, and a guy who likes to run the ball 35, 40 times a game, hates it when his team puts the ball on the ground. When they got done with that turnover, they were telling them, throw the ball out of bounds, throw it away, don't turn it over. And they had a very good drive brewing there. And Coach Ross and the former head coach, Jerry Crew, talk it over as we take another look at this play. Well, and, th and that's right where I'm talking about. I mean, unfortunately, the ball hit him in the knee and he, and he fumbled. And that's not going to happen very often. But he has to learn how to set up those blocks and keep those guys protected. Wildcats will keep it on the ground. Rushing up just shy of the first down. It's, it's Jarrett Morris, the electric one. Not a big guy. 5'10", 175, but he's quick as a cat. Catches the football, second leading receiver on the team with 24 catches coming in. His combined yardage, nearly 700 yards and nine touchdowns. I mean, he looks like a war done type of player. He's got the same kind of jersey. He's out there, he's quick, and he's a hard runner. Dean calling his own number, following the line surge, and appears to have the first down as Pushing and shoving after the play. Two suburban Big 8 rivals, both undefeated. Only one team can win the district and go to the state. Playoffs as Stinson Dean gets his towel back and looks a little bit shaken up after that play. 
Maybe uh, took a shot in the stomach or lower extremities there. Those defensive linemen, anytime a defensive person can get a clean hit or, or a not so clean hit on a quarterback, believe me, they're going to take it. From the 48 yard line, first and 10. Play action. Dean over the middle, complete Darius Hill. First down catch down to the 39 yard line. So they go to the 6'6 senior, Darius Hill, with his 14th catch of the season. Well, that's just not fair. Six foot six, across the middle, looking like Harold Carmichael out there. Just great job of securing the ball in traffic. Most of the time you have those big guys just stay out wide and throw it up uh, for them to out jump players. But this is a great job by the receivers. A little bit of footwork problem with the quarterback, but he was still able to get some heat on it. Great play, great execution. Hill, an outstanding basketball player, a starter on the Wildcats basketball team. Division one prospect is Morris. Shakes to the outside. Nice gain on first down by Jarrett Morris. Slamma there to shut him down for the Oak Park and Northman. And he did a great job of hitting the corner. A lot of times when you have uh, guys that get that turn around the corner, they want to dance and juke. He was still making moves, but he was still fluent upfield and gaining five or six yards on that. That's a great, great execution. They had a pulling guard, had the wide receiver coming back through to trap the outside linebacker. Good play. Second and four for the Wildcats. This is Chris Benham with all kinds of daylight. Has the first down. Still fighting tacklers. And taken down near the 20-yard line. So he goes for 13 and a first down for Blue Springs. These running backs are hitting the hole hard. No hesitation in the backfield. He picks his hole right there. He's got to be able to see that block a little bit better downfield, but He's working hard. This running back by committee, I could never buy into it when we did it with the Chiefs because I always thought you needed to have one guy who you counted on, but this Blue Springs team is uh, executing to perfection with those guys. Six yards per touch for Benham. First and 10 for the Wildcats at the 21-yard line in Oak Park territory, already leading three to nothing. Oh, uh, change of direction to Cameron Harms and Brett Hardy, Michael Keenan, Travis Slamma. And will have nothing to do with that as they throw the play for a loss. What a great name for a defensive guy, Slamma. <laughs> An inside linebacker to boot. Exactly. That's like Michael Stonebreaker. <laughs> sweet, sweet play. Those guys stayed home. They did their job and was able to make the play in the backfield. Loss of two, second down and 12 now for the Wildcats. Benham, your lone setback. Four receivers deployed for... Stinson Dean, a short drop all day, finding Darius Hill complete as he lunges forward down inside the 15 near the 13. So Hill with a couple of catches on the drive. And this young man, uh, like you said, it's unfair. 6'6", 190, very fast. And a big body, and they expect big plays here the rest of the season from this young man. Kind of had a quiet season. But Kelly Dono says this guy will step up when we need him in the districts and if we make it into the state playoffs. Well, I like the fact that he's catching the ball across the middle. He's doing a good job of protecting it. He's, he's a solid wide receiver. I watched him in the pregame warm-ups and just wondered what kind of player he would be. But uh, he, he's pretty solid out there, and he's doing a good job of helping this offense. Defensive penalty, encroachment on the Northman. That'll be a first down as we send it down to Chad with more on Darius Hill. Thank you, Kevin. This guy's actually got a future as a basketball player, obviously six foot six. I know UMKC, among other teams, have already looked at him very hard. But really, he has evolved tremendously as a football wide receiver. Last year, he was primarily just their jump ball guy, the guy they throw it 50 yards on the field to. This year, he's making possession type catches. He's going over the middle. He's a huge force on this Blue Springs team. With the penalty first and goal for the Wildcats. Thanks, Chad. Toss sweep. Jarrett Morris turning the corner inside the five. And he has it down near the three yard line. Does the little scat back. And he does kind of remind you of a Warwick Dunn type guy. Wears number 28 like Warwick Dunn of the Atlanta Falcons as we take another look. And his moves are so similar to him. I mean, there's no hesitation. He got that quick, set up the block, then go. And he's shooting right through those little gaps. And that's the great thing about having those smaller running backs. Sometimes you get caught up into the bigger 
bigger guys you want back there, but those smaller guys can hit those little small holes and fall forward and get some good yardage. Rude with the saving tackle, second and goal from the three. Morris again, nothing doing off the left side as a lot of blue jerseys there to meet him. And give us Travis Rude the stop. So he's made back-to-back -back plays as Travis Rude, a hard-hitting outside linebacker, a junior. 39 doing a great job of contain right there, shedding two different blocks, turning the play right back inside to the rest of his defense, to the house of pain. Rude came in with 41 total tackles. No gain on the play. Third and goal from the three now for the Wildcats. The roll, the fire wide open. Cameron Harms, touchdown, Blue Springs. Little pick play action. Used to call this the Billy Jones play. Old fullback from the, the Chiefs days that would sneak out of the backfield or sneak through through the side of the, uh, the other side tight end and be able to catch those play catch those passes for big gains. A lot of times you lose track of those guys, especially in the bunch formation, like they had three receivers bunched together. And a two-point conversion is good by Blue Springs. And they go up 11 to nothing as we take another look at the two-point conversion. Swinging gate, they snap it over to Danny Malone who takes it in. So uh, Kelly Donahoe, known around the area as a uh, gadget plays coach, using one there, makes it 11 to nothing. Blue Springs early second quarter. And that, and that gadget play is, is so effective because it's an option type of play. When that that holder sits back, if he notices that he, they're outnumbered on the other side or, or that they have the numbers on, on the gate side, then that's when they snap it. If they don't, then you'll see the team reset back into a normal one-point formation, and it's up to the Northmen or, or whoever's on defense to really adjust quickly in order to try to stop that play. Michael Keenan awaiting the kick of senior Marcelo Velasquez. And this one off and up, man. Slamma picked up by Travis Rood. Up between the hashes, Rood hurdling tacklers out near the 30-yard line. And that's where Oak Park will get it. So the turnover ends up costing them eight points on the fumble by the quarterback as Blue Springs cashes it for six, adds a two-point conversion. And the Oak Park side kind of quiet as you take a look at the scoring drive. 11 plays, 62 yards, three-yard touchdown pass to Harms. And a two-point conversion by Danny Malone on a gadget play, the old swinging gate. And it's 11-0. Blue Springs is Keenan back to work momentarily as flags will stop this play. Well, the Northmen have to be really frustrated because they're shooting themselves in the foot. They've had a couple of penalties, turnover. And, and they've been able to put together some good quality drives until they've had those mishaps. And Coach Ross agitated yeah, dead by ball, the penalty. Full start on the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. You talk to Coach Ross before every game. Cannot have turnovers, cannot have penalties. This team doing both thus far in the first half. Thus, they trail it 11 to nothing. First and 15, back to the 25, toss sweep, Keenan. Some momentary room, and then John Samia, the outside linebacker, who had a huge game last week. Chaz Bowles is out with a suspension, and this guy, John Samia Jr., has come up big for the Wildcats. He's doing a great job of filling. He's a ball hog out there. Just every time you see a play, every time you see a running play, he's somewhere in the vicinity. And that's the type of player you want to have on your defense, the player that's just going to find the ball and make plays. Samia, nine tackles last week, three for a loss, had an interception, and caused a fumble. Lost a, or actually a gain of one. Now Turner in trouble, dancing away. Turner securing the football, still fighting hard up to the 38-yard line. And he'll get 12 on the play. So Mark Turner under immediate duress, but had some great shakes and got nice yardage on the play. He got a little bit of Dante Hall action. Tried to fool him with a naked boot, and nobody kept contained and was able to split 
the defense and make some big plays. Some big yardage. Good job, third down. Third down and short. Third down and two as you take a look at the rushing numbers for Mark Turner. Four yards per carry for the quarterback. On third and short, Keenan busting free has the first down as he drags Sherrod Aiken up to the 47-yard line and move the chains for Michael Keenan in Oak Park. Full head of steam downfield. Great blocking up front to open that big of a hole on third and short like it was. Great run by Keenan. Great blocking by that Northman offensive line. Sam Butler with the ceiling block number 63. And there's Keenan's numbers thus far in the game. Again played in only four quarters the last three games. First and ten, Keenan. Shagging tacklers, still on his feet. Michael Keenan down the sidelines. Michael Keenan inside the 10, first and goal, Oak Park down near the six. You see no effects of the bad ankle there. The burst of speed, the breaking tackles, and especially, especially the breaking tackles downfield and then the burst afterwards to get that extra yardage. One tackle, two, three, Four, tight roping, five, six, and able to get down the line, get down the sideline for a big, big play. 41 yards as we send it down to Chad. Have an end of that run, never step out of bounds, dance the sidelines beautifully before being tackled at the end. First and goal, Keenan lowering his head and shoulders and pounding down near the goal line. No signal from the men in stripes, but Keenan starting to find a rhythm now, Dana, and. This big horse, once he gets rolling, he is tough to stop. Well, he's definitely getting that rhythm, and like we said earlier, they shot themselves in the foot in the first couple of series by those turnovers and just some penalties. But this offensive lineup from the north, they're doing a great job up front, and they have been doing this whole first half. But it's just about getting into a rhythm. Second down and goal from the one. And I thought I heard a whistle as Keenan takes it in. Apparently, no whistles. Touchdown number 17 for Michael Keenan. Boy, I swore I heard a whistle before that play got off. Maybe it came from the crowd. But Keenan scores his 17th touchdown of the season, one of the city leaders. And it's now 11 to 6. Extra point try by. Mr. Highlighter Shoes, and now it's a two-point conversion try, and it goes in, Ian Helmuth. So both teams pulling out the bag of tricks tonight and converting on two-point conversions, and it's 11-8 with 3.13 to go in your first half. This is number one versus number two, no holds barred football, high school football here. Two top programs pulling out all the stops. You can't blame them. 7-0, number one versus number two. Great job. Let's go back to the touchdown from the one yard line. Helm with a nice block. And here's the big 41 yard run by Keenan that set this up. Breaking all kinds of tackles, linemen downfield helping him out. Tight rope, little dancing over there. Great job. Who said he had a bad ankle? Snap it to a Turner, pitch off to Ian Helmuth, who's also the fullback. And two points on the board, eight total for Oak Park, 11 to eight. Michael Keenan with his 17th touchdown of the season on a 70-yard drive, just under three minutes to go. And to kick away, Jarrett Morris faking the handoff. And number 28, Jitterbugs his way to the 25 and then rocked down on the special teams by a number two, Jared Mann, a senior, and also a linebacker. Coming up, we've got High V at the half as we'll take a look at our first half numbers in this one versus two battle. And we'll check your first half highlights. High V at the half on the high school game of the week. From the 25, first and 10 for the Wildcats. Four receivers. Quick bubble screen, Kevin Zai gets a block by Darius Hill, breaks a tackle, and doesn't get much. Mark Turner, the free safety coming up. 
And holds the play to short yardage. Great job by the defensive backfield, stringing him to the sideline. Of course, they would have loved to make that first tackle behind the line of scrimmage, but that's just as good to get him running sideways, east and west, and wait for your other teammates to come and clean up the pile. Gain of two, second down, eight yards to go for Blue Springs. Three-time district champions the last three years, three-time league champions as Benham. 30 and then push back. And we'll get a couple more. It'll be third down and six facing the Wildcats as approaching two and a half to go in your first half. Goes the slant route, and it's complete to Zai, who paid a heavy price. Slamma slamming him to the grass turf here at North Kansas City. And it's going to depend on the spot. It is a first down, but Zai, wow, he paid a heavy price but held on to the football. Well, he had a great catch. He, even when the ball was in the air, his uh, defensive back from the Northmen was holding on to him the whole way. The whole way. He had a great catch. and. As a defensive person, that's what you want to do. Hold him up and let your guy clean him up. First and 10. This is Jared Morris. Got a string to the outside, but Travis Root, again, that outside linebacker, doing a great job of shutting down the play. And it'll be second down and long as we take another look at that last conversion to Kevin Zai and the pads popping, slamma leveling Zai. That could be a decapitation. Check it, Fillings. <laughs> no gain in the last play, second down and 10. Dean under trouble, in trouble and going to be sacked. Michael Keenan doing everything in the first half. Outside linebacker, tailback, scoring touchdowns, and he gets credit for the sack. Great job by Michael Keenan staying right upfield. Too many people on that weak side of the offense for those Blue Springs linemen to pick up. Keenan makes the big time sack. And a timeout taken by Oak Park with 1.13 to go as the Wildcats facing third down and 17 after the Oak Park timeout. Weeknights at 6, get more than the score on Metro Sports Talk with Mick Schaefer, highlight scores and expert analysis. Plus, you can call in and offer your take on the local sports scene. Metro Sports Talk, weeknights at 6 only on Metro Sports. And while we have a moment, we want to say congratulations to Metro Sports collecting six regional Emmys in St. Louis last week as we send it to Chad. The Big 12 has definitely taken notice of Kansas City area high school football. You have Michael Keenan along with Lance Brandenburg from St. Thomas Aquinas, our Metro Sports Defensive Player of the Year. They're both going to Nebraska next year to play linebacker. Todd Hazelhorst out of Olathe East, Mike Rivera out of Shawnee Mission Northwest, both committed to KU. And we still haven't even talked about where Tony Temple's going to end up. The Big 12 Conference taking notice of Metro football. There you take a look at the third down conversions. This is a tough one. Third and 17. Dean being chased by Keenan and thrown down by Michael Keenan. It will not go as a sack. He got back to the line of scrimmage, but the Wildcats are going to have to punt it away as Keenan coming up big again. Is that Michael Keenan or is that Lawrence Taylor back there? <laughs> That's closing speed right there. That's what you call closing speed, like a hawk. Well, this young man has the school record in the 100 meters dash. 10.78 did that as a sophomore. This kid can flat run. Has a touchdown run, and now after another timeout, it'll be punting time for the Blue Springs Wildcats. Is Oak Park going to get it back with just over a minute left, Danon? And tell you what, they were down 11 nothing, but Keith Ross and his team looking to grab the lead and carrying Uncle Mo momentum on their side into the intermission. Well, they definitely are doing so. They started off a little slow with a couple of penalties and turnovers, but they're they're really coming into the second quarter and going into this this halftime. With the, with the two big M on their side, the big momentum. Brandy! 
Running away is Di Peralta. Ball making a sideways hop. Going to be touched down near the 37, 38 yard line. So good field position for Oak Park. We'll have it with 53 seconds left. Kelly Donahoe for the Wildcats. Former KU quarterback out of Harrisonville High School, a guy that was told his whole career, too small, not big enough. Every year they brought in guys, and every year this guy went under center for the Jayhawks and was honorable mention all Big 8. And the veteran, Keith Ross, squaring off in his 19th year. Two fine coaches toss it out to Michael Keenan on first and 10, trying to turn the corner. And he'll take it up to the 40-yard line. As coming up from the secondary to make the stop, Zach Cunningham, the free safety for the Blue Springs Wildcats, a hard hitter, excellent student, leads the team in interceptions, and really an improved player is Zach, number 11. Clock under 30 seconds. Oak Park got two on the play, second down and eight out of the staggered split set. Keenan throwing it back to Bradshaw, he's gonna throw it. Now screens it out to Keenan. Taken down by John Samia. The outside linebacker stayed home and not fooled at all by the gadgetry by the Northmen as Oak Park will take a timeout with six seconds to go in your first half, trailing by three. Smart, smart play by Samia on the corner and way to stay at home where the blue whole Blue Springs defensive backfield really didn't have anywhere to go. Anywhere to go the Northmen did not have a place to throw the ball. Let's take another look. Looked like he wanted to go deep here. Well, he had number 89 running deep, but he was covered by three Blue Springs defenders, and he went back to the running back. And normally, that is where the guy is going to be open. After he pitches the ball, people forget about that running back, but Samia did not at that point and made a big play. So Oak Park using the timeout for Coach Ross. His team 7-0. Only close game on the road at Lee Summit where they won on a late field goal by D.L. Cleason. 29-yarder. Just seconds left. Other than that, the Northmen unblemished this season. Trailing by three. Facing third down and nine. Just six seconds to go in your second quarter. Keep it on the ground. Keenan with running room into the secondary. And he'll go down to the 44-yard line, and then he'll run out your first half clock. And a good one between number one Blue Springs, number two Oak Park, the Suburban Big 8 Conference race on the line, district play on the line, and these two heavyweights throwing haymakers through the first two quarters, and it's 11-8. to eight. Blue Springs on top of Keith Ross and the Oak Park Northmen. Coming up, high V at the half. You're watching the high school game of the week on Metro Sports.
Mack here at the North Kansas City District Stadium at halftime in a one versus two district matchup and number one Blue Springs leading Oak Park, the number two rated team, 11 to eight, and Danon Hughes uh, pretty much as we expected. Oak Park might be leading this one though if they don't turn over the football here in the first half. Yeah, they are definitely playing some good football in this second quarter. They had a couple of stumbling blocks in the first quarter that got them behind, but the way they ended the half with the big runs by Keenan and just the strong play on defense, they're gonna be a, a force to be reckoned with this second half and Blue Springs gonna have to prepare a little bit more, a little harder in that locker room to try to outsmart this Northman defense. Right now on the field, the Oak Park Northman Marching Band entertaining a full house here at the North Kansas City District Stadium. More of High V at the half. Area coaches taking this one in. Sam Brown and his son Mac from Shawnee Mission North watching. High V at the half continues after this timeout on Metro Sports. Back at High V at the half, Blue Springs on top by three in the number one versus two matchup as we take a look at our High V first half numbers in this ball game. And Michael Keenan got going late in the second quarter and look at Oak Park outrushing Blue Springs 123-45. He's doing a great job up front. That Northman offensive line is really manhandling the Blue Springs defensive line right now. And, and you can see at the end of that second half, even in the last play for him to gain 10 to 12 yards, the last play to half that gives them some great momentum to go into the second half and then to be minus one on the passing uh, that's where they need to step up and play a little bit better 11-8 Oak Park trailing by three to Blue Springs here at the North Kansas City District Stadium our first half highlights and to this time out on the high school game of the week Welcome back to the High V at the half from North Kansas City District Stadium where we have a great game going on. Number one, Blue Springs leading number two, Oak Park, 11 to eight at the half. 
And we talk about Blue Springs and Oak Park being big rivals, but you guys are even bigger rivals when it comes to wrestling. Mike Haggerty from Blue Springs, Gary Mayab from Oak Park, and wrestling season right around the corner. It certainly is, Chad. We're getting excited. Um, we're only two weeks, less than two weeks away from starting. So. You guys are two of the powers in the biggest class in the state. Are you ready for another run at each other this season? We hope so. I think, I think that it's going to be a great year across the board for Kansas City again. I think it's going to be a repeat of last year, and, and it should be, be great for the fans. And every year we see the Kansas City area go down to state and dominate quite a bit, and you think it's going to come to an end at some point, but you guys and some other programs around here seem to keep producing the high-quality kids that go down there and dominate in St. Louis or in, in Jeff City. We've got great kids. I mean, both programs, and I think we're really excited about what's also in the area with the other teams right now, and it's making all of us pick our level up. I know I talked to both of you. I've been out to your program several times. You've got the great small school a program these kids just keep coming up wanting to be dominant Blue Springs wrestlers. I think that's a credit to both of our youth club programs uh, over the past couple of years. We've seen that has been probably the telltale of both teams is that they we've been able to fuel our teams with those young kids coming out of our youth programs, Chad. Now the state championships, have, there's not very many in the Kansas City area. Is there a chance we could get wrestling back this way? Can the coach association, or are they maybe talking about moving some of those around so maybe we can have the great wrestling fans in the metro area see you guys maybe at home for a state? Well, I think it's difficult. A lot of that has to do with uh, Misha's decision on how that's set up. But certainly we've worked hard to, to try to expose wrestling in this area. And of course, what Metro Sports has done over the last couple of years has certainly made a difference. But it, I think it's up to our association. It's up to the individual programs that have the stronger programs to help kick that up a bit. Gary, you and I have talked quite a bit in the last few weeks. We want to put a wrestling match on Metro Sports to kick off the winter sports season. You two guys have got a great one cooking up for early in the season. We hope so. Uh, if we can get it all worked out, uh, Oak Park, Blue Springs, Park Hill. Park Hill, number one in the state last year, us two, and Hag Perennial at Blue Springs. All three programs, I think, are going to stay in those top three, five positions. And, and with the three returners, put it all on one night, a lot of great wrestling. You guys got to wrestle each other in the Big Eight. Why in the heck would you want to get together early in the season and knock each other around again? Great competition. I mean, you, you know it's going to be on. Just like this game tonight, it's going to be on, you know. And you guys really have the advantage. You guys also bring in Ray Pack and Oak Grove at times. You guys wrestle all the classes because those smaller classes are still pretty good wrestling programs. No doubt about it. Bob Glasgow's program and Paul Barwick's program, uh, some of the best programs in this area. And, and truthfully, in wrestling, I don't think there's any secret. Those teams that wrestle the better teams usually come out on top in the end. I think we're also seeing out of out of the out of the main program some of the great programs in this metro area. The guys that are now going on to the big time Division One programs. I know you guys have both lost wrestlers in the last few years to big time programs. Talk about the caliber of guys you guys have coming out now. Well, I think that, that like Coach said, I think it starts with our, our youth programs and both of them being outstanding and then moving up. And I think right now there's starting to be an expectation. I know a lot of coaches are now contacting us that are D1 coaches that are looking for the next group to come out of here. And you've, you've had some guys come out of your area, too, that have gone on to become great college wrestlers. Yeah, and we hope we have a few more, um, Chad. We've got some good kids in our program right now, and, of course, they're getting some contacts here and there. But, you know, truthfully, as long as they have a great high school experience, even the kids that maybe aren't the state champs and everything, as long as they have a positive experience in the program, and I think that's the way Gary approaches it, too, there's room for everybody in our sport. And certainly if, if we win a state championship, that's great. But, uh, you know, the friendships that we've made over the last several years and and uh, just, again, it's, it's, a, it's a family atmosphere. Uh, we had a, a situation down at State last year that was kind of unique when we went one, two, and three, and we all had our pictures taken together, and that, that means more to me probably than, than winning a state championship. The real question is, do either one of you guys have a guy in your starting lineup that can beat you guys wrestling headed? Because I've seen you both at practice, <laughs> and you guys can take on any one of your guys in whatever the weight class is. Well, the one prop, the biggest problem I have is my assistant coach, uh, Matt Cox. He stands about six foot two and weighs about 200 pounds. Um, and uh, he thinks I can, I still have my bluff in, but there's no way. That Gary, I know you like to mix it up with your guys a little bit too. Right. Oh, it's great. I, I think that's one of the greatest parts about our sport. I mean, we grew up together on a college team together, coached together at college, and now getting to share with our kids, those kind of things. And with my situation, I have a lot of my former wrestlers are back with us right now as coaches in, in both groups, the kids group and our high school group. And luckily they're bigger than me and now they're taking those big kids on. I just get to work with the little ones. That's right. good. Gary and Mike, we're looking forward to seeing you guys early December on Metro Sports, that big triangular. Thanks, Chad. Thanks. Wrestling season right around the corner. You think these guys are big rivals? We've got a great second half to come yet. Blue Springs, Oak Park, stay tuned. Thank you. 
Blue Springs by three at halftime as we continue with the High V at the half with our High V first half highlights in this one versus two battle from the North Kansas City District Stadium. And the passing game working early, Danon, for the Wildcats. Well, Darius Hill has been making some big plays this first half. A little off balance throw by the quarterback there. He was still able to catch it in traffic. Here we have him again in traffic across the middle. Like you said, last year he was basically an outside guy, and then he, he got Harms that catches the touchdown. Great job here. How about this two-point conversion to Danny Malone? Catch Swinging Northman's, gate action. Catch him sleeping a little bit. Be able to put two points on the board and put yourself back in the game. Turner had an early fumble, but he's played pretty solid through the first half, and then Keenan got going. Well, Keenan got going, and Turner got going, plus of that offensive line. He has a great run, six broken tackles, tight rope down the sideline. No ankle injury for him. Able to punch it in the end zone. He did a great job of running, a great job of from that running attack in the second half by the Northman. Another gadget play for a two-point conversion. As the pitch went to Ian Helmuth, 11-8 is your score. At the intermission, Blue Springs on top of Oak Park. Last year was 21 to 14. Blue Springs winning. They won three in a row. Last Oak Park win was 1999 when they won the conference title. And we're back after a timeout. You're watching the high school game of the week on Metro Sports. Beautiful city lights of Northtown. We're at the North Kansas City District Stadium. District football, first round action, Blue Springs and Oak Park. We're at halftime, and it's 11-8 Blue Springs. And be sure to tune in every Friday night at 10, right after the high school game of the week, for the McDonald's High School Roundup. Chad Arberts and the gang will have the roundup for you coming up. Highlights and scores of your local teams. And if you missed the Friday night action, you can catch the Roundup Saturdays, 9 a.m., Mondays, 5 p.m. It's the McDonald's High School Roundup only on Metro Sports. And, Chad, uh, what are we expecting on this week's show? Well, Kevin, you have week two of districts in Kansas, a big week, because that's really the difference maker between the two teams that are going out of each district and the two teams are staying home. And then the rest of week one of the Missouri side, some great matchups with the likes of Lee Summit going over to Rockhurst, see if anybody can take out Rockhurst in that district. You've got some great smaller class matchups we're excited about. We'll see how Ray Peck is shaking out. We'll see if maybe Grandview can win a district. Uh, I think we've got some really good games coming back, and it's really a critical week in Missouri because that one loss in districts can mean your season. It can make your last two games pretty much worthless. As we take a look at this Class 6 District 8, and it is just loaded to the hilt with fine teams and great records. We've got two undefeated teams going at it tonight in Oak Park 
And at Blue Springs, Blue Springs South 6-1, and one, their lone loss in week one, a road loss at Rockers in a very close game. Liberty a little bit down this year, but always dangerous. They come in at 3-3. Three and three. And take a look at the rankings to the left of the teams. You've got the 1, 2, and 4 teams in our Super 25. And two teams ranked in the Class 6 poll, 1 and 3, in Blue Springs number 1, Oak Park number 3. A combined record of 23 and 4. And once again, this one will decide who wins the Suburban Big 8 conference title. Blue Springs has won the last three. They've won the last three district titles. So the Wildcats on a roll, trying to continue that roll in 2003. And a Michael Keenan got off to a little bit of a slow start, but in the second quarter, number 32 got those legs working, and he really got going, Danon. He was all over the field. Michael Keenan, the future Cornhusker, pressing the hole, big gains as, as a running back. Long, long run here, 40 yards, six tackles broken, tight rope down the sideline. Great job providing a spark. Then coming back on defense with the big sack, Hawk down the quarterback right here, LTS. He's all over the field. This is what you want your star players to do on a, on a platform like this. Metro Sports, number one versus number two. He's stepping up, and he's making big plays. Well, for most backs, that would be a very good ball game. 117 yards and a touchdown for Keenan, who averages 239 yards per game. Uh, he's just halfway there. And to consider that this Blue Springs defense is only allows 134 yards a game, and they've already given up 117 just to him. Never mind the rest of the offense. That's just a, a great job by the Northmen up front and how they're taking control of this Blue Springs defense. Captains going out on the field. Once again, Oak Park won the toss, deferred their option to the second half, and Danon, they're going to start with the football, and they seem to have the momentum there late in the second quarter. Well, like you said, the first half was just filled uh, almost a comedy of errors with the, with the turnovers and the penalties, and they were still making big plays. Those are the things that were killing them. In the second quarter, they got their game straight. They got back on track and were able to make those big plays and not have the silly mix-ups that cost them in the first quarter. So we, it'll be interesting to see what, how they come out and what the Blue Springs team has in store for them coming out of this uh, halftime. Let's see how Blue Springs came to the district. A 7-0 record, their road to the district. An easy win over St. Louis Roosevelt, but the big win week two, they go at Rockers, beat Tony Temple and Rockers in overtime, 37-31. to That puts them into the number one spot. Beat Columbia Hickman in a high scoring game, and since then they have rolled, beating Lee Summit North, Winnetonka, Truman, and last week beating Lee Summit 35 7. Keep in mind, Oak Park winning by a field goal late, so that's something to keep in mind in the head to head matchups. Two 7 0 teams, 11 8 on the scoreboard. Kelly Donahoe and Blue Springs on top. Wildcats to kick it off to start things in the third quarter. And the Wildcats have to do something to get this momentum back. We talked about the end of the, end of the first half, second quarter, and how well the Northmen were doing. Blue Springs has to come out and establish themselves with authority here in the second half and, make, and continue to make this a ball game. Velasquez has it on the team. Michael Keenan waiting deep along with Travis Rude. And this is a very good kick. Keenan near the goal line at the two-yard line following the wedge. And dragging tacklers across the 20 near the 23-yard line, and that's where the Oak Park Northman will set up shot. Mark Turner, the quarterback, will be out there. And once again, that offensive line has done a great job of opening things for Michael Keenan. That's Martino, Butler, Hedge, Baugh, and Lee. And those guys trying to spring number 32 tonight. Like I said, Turner, has, he, he had one fumble. He had one nice run as a quarterback, but he hasn't been able to really complete too many passes here. It's all been that up front line and Michael Keenan. Average 72 yards passing per game. Keenan back to work, following behind Sam Butler and going for nine quick yards before Kyle Crandall, the outside linebacker, got him. But I like this offensive line. They're motivated and they're active. Look at... Look at this Sam Butler on the run. 
I really like this offensive line and how they're getting out. They're not just staying still one place, blocking the man in front of them. They're trapping, they're pulling. Those guys are getting 20 yards downfield. And you can't ask much more from an offensive lineman but to pull out and get 10 and 20 yards downfield and still make blocks. Second along one, Turner on the option. Uh, call his own number, has the first down. As he treks out to the 37-yard line. Cunningham, the free safety, makes the stop. And Oak Park, two plays and a first down to start things in the third quarter. Smart play. He kind of drew this option out as long as he could until he saw that crease to get the first down and get a couple extra yards after that. formation. Keenan, oh, a chug in those legs up to the 42-yard line and doesn't look like much, but that's five yards in a heartbeat. Falling forward, he's tight roping in the middle. I mean, those, those, I mean, Blue Springs is doing a good job of keeping those holes kind of tight. It's just Keenan and all his athletic ability to get through those small holes and tight rope right in the middle of the field to gain five yards. 131 on the game and a touchdown. 287 was his high. That was on the high school game of the week against Park Hill as Turner nearly lost the center exchange, able to cover it up. And Keith Ross's heart stopped momentarily as Turner coughed one up in the first half, cost his team, but able to go and get that one. Let's see what the problem was on that one. I don't. Uh, no, if it was the quarterback's fault or the center, Joe Hedge's fault. I don't know. I, I, it's hard to say when you got the, such a quick snap like that. But uh, those guys, they have to. Turner has to lead this team and protect that ball because right now they have the momentum. They can't do anything to shoot themselves. Third and five. Keenan trying to turn the corner. Following big A.J. Ball has the first down. Still chugging. Michael Keenan down to the 46-yard line of Blue Springs territory, and the offensive linemen continue to spring him free. Offensive line, offensive line. If he was a professional running back, he'd be taking these guys to Morton Steakhouse after the game or something because they are opening up some big holes and getting him some big gains out there. The right guard, A.J. Baugh, 6'3", 270-pound senior, two-year starter, last year's second-team all-conference, number 60, clearing the way for a first down for Michael Keenan and Oak Park. Here's Keenan, trying to step to the outside, not able to get outside. Colby Walkner makes the stop from the defensive end slot for Blue Springs. They'll give him two yards in the play, second down and eight. Blue Springs needs to be a little bit more solid up front. They're getting some play from that right side, the right outside, and the, and the defensive backs are doing a good job of coming up and making plays, but it's a little bit too little, too late for those guys when Keenan gets the ball with a full head of steam. And there's Keenan. Powering his way near the 40-yard line, gaining four more. And it's going to be third down. And about four yards to go before Crandall wrapped him up. This is your classic methodical hit you in the mouth, give it to 32, run it down your throat drive. Exactly. Everybody on this field, both coaches, everybody in the stands knows where this ball is going. And it's just about toughness and who's going to grind it out harder. Third and four. Rude goes in motion for Oak Park. Play fake. Turner keeps it, breaks free. Mark Turner, the first down, down the sidelines. Finally captured at the 20-yard line. So they fooled him, the quarterback. Keeping it, and Mark Turner rushing for a first down as he goes for 19 on the play as we take another look. Well, this is a unique play because this is almost a bootleg to the strong side. I mean, you think that the Blue Springs defense will be pursuing that side because they think Keenan has the ball here, but yet Turner continues, finds an open gap, and presses hard, burst through for the first down and then some. Samia with the saving tackle, first and 10. Keenan off the left side, huge hole. Keenan breaking free. Touchdown, Oak Park. Oh, 
manhandle. Manhandling this Blue Springs defense right now. Drew Pittenger and his yellow highlighter colored shoes kicks the extra point through. Drew could jog down a highway and not get hit with those shoes on. Oh, yeah. As we take a look at the shoes, let's go back to the Keenan 20 yard touchdown run, his 18th touchdown of the season. Big number 60 out there trying to find a block, but that's all Keenan right there. No hesitations. Pushes off his own blocker. Squirt to the end zone. Great running play. Great drive by the Northman here. Just damaging the psyche of this Bruce defense. Big night for number 32. 20-yard touchdown run is 18th. The ninth play, 77-yard classic, methodical. Run it right down your throw drive. A textbook of Oak Park football is the kick away. And here comes the Wildcats back the other way. Kevin Zai on the return. And nice coverage by the Northmen and the fans here on the home side making a lot of noise as their Northmen have the momentum. And now lead it 15 to 11. Nice coverage and almost a, a strip and a fumble there on the kickoff, which are really, which would have really damaged this Blue Springs team. Uh, team. Stinson Dean and the Wildcats scrimmage from their own 21-yard line, down by four. Early stages of your third quarter, and nothing doing to the outside for the scat back Jared Morris. As the outside linebackers are doing a great job, Danon, of not letting 28 get around, and Travis Rude has been strong throughout number 89. Well, they're doing a great job of staying home and, and doing their job and not trying to make too many big plays, but just be solid. And like I said, they're containing these scat back running backs of Blue Springs. No gain in the play, second down and 10. Fake the pass, give it off, up the middle. This is Morris. Following his blockers nicely out to the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and five yards to go. And Nick Lee, the last man off the pile, making the tackle. Nick Lee, one of the defensive tackles for the Northmen. At 42 tackles and one sack. Definite college potential. Fans getting up, making a lot of noise on the home side for the Northmen. Looking for the defensive stop. Well, they have a lot to cheer about. I mean, they, these guys are playing lights out football in this, since the second quarter. Third down, let's call it six. On the fade near side for the 6-6. Six, six. Hill can't run under it. Incomplete. Hunting time for the Wildcats. Northman definitely have the momentum. If you want to think back. Oh. This is a play where a quarterback is trying to be too precise. When you have 6'6 six, six guy out there with, his, with Hill's athletic ability, you don't throw it out of bounds. You throw it in any vicinity, throw it behind him, make him stop and jump, but you don't throw it out of bounds. You can't try to be too pretty with that throw right there. Nice coverage by 5'10", Randy Smith going against 6'6", six, six, Darius Hill. De Peralta, excellent punt away for Blue Springs. And Rude has to let it hit. And that trickles all the way down to the 25-yard line. So a 50-yard punt. You don't see too many of those in the high school ranks. And that's a field position changer and a huge special teams move by Blue Springs. As Oak Park will get it back, leading 15 to 11, just under six to play in your third quarter. Well, big time punt, 50 yards, and 45 of it was in the air, 47 of it was in the air. Just a great execution by the punt team. But if you think about this, Northman, we go back to the first half. If they don't have those fumbles and penalties, how bad would this game be right now? That's the big question. One turnover in the first half by quarterback Mark Turner, and Blue Springs able to capitalize. Double handoff as Keenan handing off to Rude, and the Wildcats were waiting for that play as they've seen that play uh, in their sleep preparing for this game as that is a staple of Oak Park football, the old double handoff. 
And the Wildcats were ready. Well, you just try to catch them off guard right there because the way this Northman team is playing right now, they could have continued to give it to Keenan right, left, up the middle, and they'd get enough gains right there, but it, they kind of hurt themselves right there trying to trick the Blue Springs uh, disciplined defense. John Samia, the outside linebacker, a JV guy last year, the most improved player on this team, and not fooled at all as Rude has helmet problems. Going to go to Brett Harding for a little help to try to adjust the helmet or the chin strap. Well, we got a little bit of a break here, Kevin. I know without Spears here, Marcus Spears here, we haven't talked about the food on the sideline, but the hospitality by this Oak Park uh, group up here in this booth has been excellent. The food and everything. Barbecue, pizza galore. As Keenan back to work to daylight. Michael Keenan finally caught from behind by Zach Cunningham, the free safety. And running wild is Michael Keenan for Oak Park. You don't need any trick plays. Give it to 32 and let him go. At this point, this Oak Park team can tell Blue Springs where they're going to run the ball, and Blue Springs is not going to be able to stop Keenan. He is definitely on the roll. This offensive line is just manhandling the Blue Springs defense. Big plays, big run after big run. Close to 200 yards. 28 on that one. Keenan again hammered down hard by Corey Arrington after short yardage as we send it down to Chad Harberts. Thank you, Kevin. The Thomas A. Simone Award is given out every year to the best football player in the Kansas City area. And last year, Michael Keenan was overlooked for the award, not because he had average numbers, but because of the huge numbers put up by Tony Temple of Rockhurst and Jim Bonite of Olathe North who won the award, Derek Rasmussen at Ray Peck. This year, at this point of the season, Michael Keenan has to be considered the favorite to win the Simone Award. No argument here. Second down and eight. Turner calls his own number. And nice balance as Turner close to the first down and may have it as Mark Turner fumbled in the first half but been running with some passion since that miscue. Well, he gets tripped up right at the end of this run and his knee touches the ground so he doesn't get the first down. But these guys are doing a lot of damage and they don't even have to throw the ball. They haven't had to throw the ball. It's just run right, run left, quarterback here, Keenan there, and Blue Springs is still just baffled. Third down and a yard for the Northmen as Rude goes in motion. Out of the eye set. Keenan, who else? Breaks to the outside, turning on the speed. Keenan down the sideline, dragging Brown. First and goal, Northman. Michael Keenan. Unbelievable how this kid is playing. Unbelievable. As soon as February comes around, Nebraska better get that paper on the table in front of him and his parents, get his signature as soon as possible because this kid's going to be a stud. Went up to Nebraska over the summer with Coach Clemens, the offensive line coach who does a great job and did the pro agility test and scored the highest in seven years. And Nebraska said, we want you. I know on defense, you got Bo Pelini up there. Actually, Bo was a, a, G, a GA for us at Iowa when, he, uh, when I was in college. So I know Bo very well, and he's going to be very pleased to have a kid like Keenan on his side of the ball. 224 yards for Michael Keenan. Two touchdowns, now 18 for the season. And Coach Ross says Michael Keenan is one of the best we've ever had here at Oak Park. And that coach right there has had some excellent football players over the years. But like I said, if you tally his numbers as you take a look at the rushing yards, Michael has only played in really five games. He's averaging 239 yards, so he still needs to go a ways just to get his average. Only played four quarters in the last three games coming into tonight's play because had an ankle problem, was ejected from the Leaf Summit game, had to sit out a one-game suspension in the Winnetonka win. And number 32 running with all kinds of vitality tonight and running right down Blue Springs' throat as they try to get six more. Let's take a wild guess what's happening here. <laughs> First and goal, Keenan. Breaks to the outside. Forget about it. He 
He's got the hat trick. Touchdown number three on the night, 19th on the season. And there were no white jerseys in sight as that offensive line mowed him down for number 32. All you saw were Wildcats on their butt that play. Not just blocked, but falling down. Untouched into the end zone, Michael Keenan. Extra point by Drew Pittenger. And it is good. Now 29 for 32 on points after touchdowns. And Michael Keenan could have walked in. That's how good the blocking was on this play. On the ground. On the ground. Those guys are not just getting blocked, they're getting pancaked down there, and Keenan is setting up those blocks excellently. Just great blocking. Can't say enough about it. As you take a look at the score, he drives, six plays, 63 yards, Keenan. Over 200 yards rushing on a 10-yard touchdown run, his third of the night. As here comes Kevin Zai on the return for the Wildcats. Up the hashes, Zai finally tripped up as he crosses the 40-yard line by Jake Bradshaw. And a nice momentum-turning return by Kevin Zai for Blue Springs. And they'll have good field position as their offense checks on the, on the field as they now trail by 11, 22 to 11 with 3.11 to play in your third. Well, you hope a play like that, a kickoff return, will provide a spark for this Blue Springs offense, or just the Blue Springs team in general, because they need it right now. Ever since that second quarter, they haven't played as strong as they need to to even compete against this Oak Park team. In motion, Whitworth. Benham in the backfield. This, this play is blown dead, as we'll hear from Phil Stompoli and his crew. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. Oh, how the tides have turned. First quarter mistakes by Oak Park, turned it around. Blue Springs just couldn't capitalize enough in that first half to get a significant lead, and now they're shooting themselves in the foot here. First and 15 with the penalty walk off. Danny Malone in the slot in motion. Under pressure, the quarterback finds Danny Malone. He's whipped to the turf by Ian Helmuth after a short gain as we send it down to the field and Chan Harberts. Thank you, Kevin and Dana. And I've been on the Oak Park sidelines for the first and third quarter. And you could see by looking at these guys and listening to them in the first quarter, they weren't sure they could win this game because Oak Park does not have a lot of great recent history against Blue Springs. But it's a whole different attitude in the second half. These Oak Park guys now are confident they can knock off the number one team in the city. And yeah, recent history, Blue Springs has won three in a row over Oak Park. As you take a look at the passing numbers for Stinson Dean. Dean came in averaging 152 yards passing per game. Last Oak Park win, 99 is Dean. Under duress, gonna be sacked. D.L. Gleason back to the 40 yard line with the sack. It'll be third down and long. They are hitting on all cylinders right now. This, this Northman offense, defense, special teams is doing a great job. Three-step drop, you gotta get rid of the ball. A receiver has to get open. There is no time for that extra hit. Great had, pursuit. Had the wrestling coaches on. This guy, second at state in wrestling, David Lewis Gleason, DL Gleason. There you take a look at the total plays. Oak Park twice as many on third down and 12. A little screen pass going nowhere. Jared Morris blown up by guess who? Travis Rude with a rude awakening, stopping the play. The outside backer for the Northmen has played a whale of a game. Well, this is set up like a screen. This play is set up like a screen, but you see more Northmen pursuing that play than Blue Springs. D. Peralta gets it away. The last one, a 50-yarder. Joe Sabina trying to clear the area. And the 
the ball will trickle down inside the 20 yard line, touchdown near the 17. While we got a moment, uh, one of the Northman returners, uh, Jeremy Otker, out with a broken foot. I understand he had surgery this week. We wish him all the best in his recovery, a senior and not taking it too well. So Jeremy, I uh, hope you get well and we wish you all the best in getting back after that injury. Number 22, Jeremy Otker is Oak Park has it back. Momentum on their side, 32 running wild. And running up that Simone watch list is Michael Keenan as the Northmen have it back. First and 10 from the 17 yard line. Keenan breaking tackles and pounding his way. And a nice gain up near the 22 yard line. He'll go for about five yards on the play. Mast in the stop for the Wildcats, one of the linebackers. Well, it gets bad when you're, you as a defense take it as a victory when you only stop Keenan for five yards. I mean, he's just doing a great job. And that offensive line, my goodness. Winding down things in the third quarter is Keenan. Goes for another yard before he shut down. Yeah, the offensive line, Danon, a lot of guys been around. You've got two-year starters in Sam Butler, Derek Martino, and A.J. Baugh. And you've got the center, Joe Hedge, and Nick Lee as three-year starters. So they've been playing together a long time. Not the biggest offensive line. I asked Keith Ross, you know, how's this one stack up? We well, said, well, my 96 offensive line was bigger. We had two guys go Division One, in Mike Hayes and Matt Stopper. So it's hard to say, but this one is very good as well, but not the biggest line in the world. And credit Ken Clements, their offensive line coach, not the biggest group in the world, but they work well together. And we're going to wind things out here in the third quarter. All Northman in the quarter. And more Michael Keenan running right down Blue Springs' throats as Oak Park will take a 22-11 lead in the fourth quarter as Michael Keenan on fire, two touchdown runs of 20 and 10 as Michael Keenan's action takes you to the timeout. You're watching the High V High School Game of the Week on Metro Sports. Number two, looking to upset number one in first round district action on the High V High School game of the week. Oak Park 22, Blue Springs 11. They put the final 12 on the board. 12 minutes to play in this one. And Michael Keenan has had an enormous night. Coming back after a suspension. Had to serve a one game suspension after a game ejection against Lee Summit. And here he goes again. Across the 30, pounded his way. He's knocked out of bounds near the 32-yard line. Seven yards and a first down for the Northmen. Take a look at the third quarter total yards. Unbelievable. If you would have told me in one quarter before this game even started, even in the first quarter, the way they were handling this Northman team, that third quarter come around and only have five yards total yards, I would have laughed in your face. Split backs now for the Northman. Keenan will counter play. Gets a nice block by A.J. Baugh that springs him out near the 40-yard line and a quick eight. And once again, one of those active offensive linemen. Watch number 60 open the way for Michael Keenan. Well, you got to credit the, the Northman coaches, the offensive coordinator, realizes you have some linemen that are not as big as who they're going to play against. So what do you do to counteract that? You have these guys moving. You have them pulling. You have them trapping. You have them doing a lot of movement and getting out on those linebackers who they are bigger than. Second down three. Keenan dancing first down. As he's out to the 47-yard line, seven more. And right now, this Northman 
offensive line leaning on Blue Springs as we take another look. What do you do to counteract this? What, what can you do as Blue Springs? I'm sitting here trying to think of what Blue Springs could do to stop this, and there's really not much. These guys are just going straight at him. Wherever number 32 is, you know he's getting the ball. And he's just making plays. First and 10, Northman. Keenan, right behind Butler. Cuts it up nicely and takes it into Wildcat territory down to the 46 and a half yard line. And it's another big chunk of six yards in the play for Michael Keenan running downhill behind that offensive line. Now it's a thankless job to be an offensive line, but these guys tonight are really setting the tone. Oh, they're doing a great job and they're being noticed. Kansas City Metro wide, they're being noticed right now. If they were never noticed before, these guys are good. Second and four. Keenan, it's a hard hit from uh, Justin Brown from the secondary as he goes for two yards. And Kelly Donahoe said the key matchup in this game will be the offensive line of Oak Park versus our defensive line. And give the edge to Oak Park. Scoreboard two, 22-11. Exactly, they're doing a great job up front. They're clogging up holes, they're moving around. Even the linebackers can't get through to make the plays. Most of the time, your defensive linemen are just pursue guys that really don't make many tackles. But this offensive line is just sty stymieing this whole defense. Keenan on third down and a couple. Lord is head and shoulders and submarine his way. He'll be close to the first down. Kyle Crandall, the outside backer for Blue Springs making the stop. Looks like they're going to be short. It'll be fourth down. Fourth down and a healthy yard. You mentioned the season high for Michael Keenan is 287 and five touchdowns against Park Hill. Closing in on that mark as the fans get up. The Northmen will go for it. Fourth and a yard out of the eye. Keenan. Who else? Depends on the spot. Wildcats may have stepped up. Wildcats stepped up, no first down. They come up short. Great defensive stop. Stompoli and crew are even at the side angle. They're going to bring on the chains to make sure. I don't think it's necessary. Danon says no first down. Blue Springs ball in the downs, and yeah, not much running room. No, they, Linebackers fired in. They had to get past that 37-yard line at least to get the first down. Let's send it down to Chad Harberts with a special guest. Thank you, Kevin. I'm here with Michael's grandmother, Marlis. First of all, your grandson is having one heck of a ball game. How do you feel? He's playing wonderful tonight. He is. He's doing really great. The team's all good this year. I'm, I'm really impressed with the whole team. I'm just, they're having a good year, you know? It seems Michael's handing out as many hits tonight as he's taking. Yeah, that's true. He's uh, but he's getting a few yards. He's not getting as many as he does in some games, but he's doing pretty good. How tough was it for him to miss last week's game? He told me he's never missed a football game his entire life. No, um, it didn't seem to bother him too bad because he knew it was an easy team to beat, and he knew his, his teammates could win because he knows he's got good teammates. And, he supports his teammates. Well, we'll let you get back to the game because I know you're missing him out on defense. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Michael Creeman, Keenan's grandmother, Marla's here, and she's enjoying her grandson having a great game, Kevin. 32 on the sidelines momentarily. We'll play some outside backer and having a huge game tonight is when well, we were talking to Grandma there, uh, Jarrett Morris with a first down run for the Wildcats, trying to take advantage, trying to get the momentum back. Morris again. Right up the gut, D.L. Gleason says, I don't think so. And it's going to be second down and long. D.L. Gleason, the inside linebacker, an improved player. And a man that's went from outside backer to inside backer. Not the biggest guy in the world, but he is tough as nails. Second at State in wrestling, D.L. Gleason. We've got to credit this Blue Springs offense. What they did is come out, get the big turnaround on fourth and, and one. And right up the middle, two straight plays trying to announce themselves with authority here and establish some, some momentum. 
Second down, eight as the fans making noise. The slant off the hands, incomplete to Darius Hill. Third down and eight. This play is inches, feet from going 60 yards the other way. Great job by Rude staying, staying home as the outside linebacker playing that curl to flat, flat area. Rude only a junior. Oh. Keith Ross's underclassman studs. Fans on their feet on the home side. Fans arriving late in the afternoon for this one versus two matchup. Third down, eight for the Wildcats. Down by 11 as we play in the fourth. Delay, give it off to Benham, breaking free. Chris Benham with the first down, still on his feet down the sidelines. Benham tripped up, finally by A.J. Johnston, but not after a huge gain down near the 16-yard line. This is exactly what Blue Springs needed. They needed a big play. They, they had a couple of, a little bit of success getting nickel and dimes downfield, first down, five and 10 yards, but they needed this big play to get back on the right road. And don't forget, even though Oak Park has been dominating this second half and most from the second quarter. They're only up 11 points. A touchdown here and an extra point really gets this game really back. They can get close. within four with a touchdown, an extra point, a touchdown, and a two point conversion. They draw within three after a 26 yard gain. And now Benham slipped on the wet turf, put his knee down, and will lose yardage. Ivan Hernandez waiting for him on the defensive line, but the knee touch blew the play dead. Well, check out Brett Harding right here, staying home. Had nowhere to go. Big defensive tackle right there in the hole to stop him whether he slipped or not. A lose a yard in the play. Second and 11, clock under seven to play. Wildcats, number one team in the city, number one in the Missouri. Class six state poll, trying to rally here in the fourth. Dean, the short drop, throwing the fade to Brown. Justin Brown runs under a touchdown, Wildcats. He's got one good hand, and number three reels it in. New ball game. New ball game, two big plays carry this drive. Great job by the Blue Springs offense of stepping back, having a a long low on offense from the second quarter on and be able to put themselves in a position to, to gain the lead the next time they get the ball. They just need to hold this momentum. So they'll go for the one point, extra point, maybe. Swinging gate again, no. They're gonna go for a two point conversion. Give it to Malone, trying to throw. Throws to the end zone, broken up. Great play by Randy Smith. Knocked it away from Luke Whitworth and they only add six. So it's a five point difference, 22-17. And watch this, Keystone Cops, folks. Basically this play, you look at the Oak Park defense, it's just go schoolyard ball. Whoever has the ball, I'm going after. I don't know about any of my responsibility or rules, contain or whatever. Whoever has the ball, you go and try to track them down. And they were able to be fortunate on that and knock that two point conversion away. Let's go back to the touchdown. Touchdown number three for Justin Brown. Broke his wrist against Rockhurst in week two. Came back last week at a TD catch. And this week in the first round of districts. Great job adjusting to the ball. Leaving himself a lot of room to the sideline to be able to make that catch with a lot of space and not have to uh, worry about getting out of bounds. Great throw, great catch. Velasquez has it on the tee. Big number 92, 190-pound senior to run up. And this will be Travis Rood from the seven-yard line. Rood runs into his own guy and goes down in a heap inside the 20-yard line. Say hello to your own teammate, Travis. I don't know. If you can't see those big blue shirts in front of you, I don't know what you're going to do, but... Doink. <laughs> Hi, A.J. Johnston. Oh, you're on my team. Who Sorry. You, who do you credit that tackle to? That's, that's Give it to A.J. Johnston. <laughs> well, Uncle Mo has been on Keith Ross's side most of the night, but it's starting to swing to the purples of Blue Springs. 
First and 10 from the 19. Keenan back to work, behind the big line, stumbling, fumbling, rumbling, and close to another first down as he chugs his way out to the 27-yard line in a pickup of eight. They've run the same play four or five times in the last couple of series. And I have to believe that everybody out there knows which play is coming when they line up in that same set. But these guys are doing such a great job up front that they can't stop them for eight yards. Second down, short, Keenan. Up across the 30 and we'll have the first down for Oak Park as he closes in on a season high night as Cunningham a little shaken up the free safety. And for the first down. Cunningham will not leave the field. This guy's nails. One of the biggest hitters. Made a bushel full of tackles tonight. There you take a look at the first downs by the half. And Oak Park dominated in the second half. But the lead down to five with five and a half to play. First and ten, Northman as Rude goes in motion. Keenan breaking free. Michael Keenan into the secondary. A first down run to the 48-yard line. 18 big ones for number 32. And he's a little shaken up. Cunningham, who made the tackle, is shaken up. Both these guys going to walk it off, though. First and ten, Northman. Great job pressing the hole and bursting through. Holding the ball high and tight. Watch the tackler trying to grab onto the ball, make a play as stripping it. Keenan did a great job of keeping that ball tight to his body, not turning it over. Like he grabbed at his knee. He has the bad ankle and has a new season high. Michael Keenan, 38 for 302. First and 10, Northman. Quarterback keeping, tucking, and running as Turner down the sidelines. Very effective play as Turner going for about eight yards on the bootleg. A little naked bootleg action there. That's a great job, great call on the offense. Offensive coordinator north of the Northmen going Keenan, 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 bootleg. Fooled everybody out there. He gets a nice, healthy game. Now what you would have liked to have here, especially with them uh, being a little bit more contest right now is Turner staying in bounds on that play, allowing that clock to run a little bit further. Just under five to play. It'll be second and three is Rude in motion. Keenan, not much. Wildcats there to bury him. Great job. Sean Sharkey, the inside linebacker, leading the charge. It's going to be third down. And a couple facing the Oak Park Northman, leading by five. Well, we were in the same situation as last drive before Blue Springs scored. Third and short, fourth and short, and Blue Springs was able to stop and hold them. Let's see what they can do here. Silkwood, the late run off of the Wildcats as Sherrod Aiken checks in on third down and two. They fake it to Keenan Turner, will keep. Breaks a tackle, has the first down as he powers to the 40-yard line. So once again, Turner, a little bootleg out, fakes the handoff and takes the punishment and moves the chains for the Northman. Great job by Turner. Didn't really fool the Blue Springs defense this time, but that was just all athletic ability and just the want to get to that first down and beyond. Sharkey had a shot at him, missed him. Credit Turner with a nice move. And a new set of downs for the Oak Park Northman, trying to go to 8-0, trying to go 1-0 in the district. From the 40, first and 10 in Blue Springs territory. Oak Park putting together another nice drive as Keenan. Just powering behind the line, following the blockers down to the 34-yard line. And he'll get about six yards on the play. And the thing is, is this is the same line up the same line up where Keenan is in the backfield and they're, all they're doing is running a sweep away from where he's lining up and he's not even being touched until he gets three yards downfield. Where is the Blue Spring outside linebackers and defense to get him in the backfield? Seen a lot of grabbing by Blue Springs. No tackling. Second and four. Keenan to the short side of the field. 
And runs into Colby Watner, defensive end number 90, and Justin Brown. And I he spoke comes up from the soon. secondary and makes the stop. Spoke too soon, and, and actually that's what they should have been doing all evening on those sweep plays. That corner, those corners need to get more involved in this run defense up at the line of scrimmage, not being the safety valves 10 and 12 and 15 yard yards downfield as they've been so far. Timeout taken by Kelly Donahoe and the Blue Springs Wildcats with 3.02 to play in your fourth quarter. Next week, we check out district action in class two, and that would be uh, district number 13 as number 12, Pembroke Hill on the road to take on the defending state champions, St. Pius. They've struggled this year. They're three and four, but they're still the defending state champions. Pem Hill, a perfect season brewing at 7-0 heading into this week's play. It'll be next Friday, Halloween night, October 31st on Metro Sports. Nobody covers high school sports like Metro Sports. So after a Wildcats timeout, they have two left. Big third down facing Oak Park. Kelly Donahoe needs a stop. It'll be third down, seven yards to go. Turner play action. Turner with time, and it's wide of his fullback, Ian Helmet, and the Wildcats will get it back. So Mark Turner, great fires on the pass, hasn't thrown that much tonight.